to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. If you ever covet the testimony of Enoch in your life, the question you have to answer is, do I love the Lord? And there are clear indices if and when you love the Lord the Bible does not leave you in the dark there are proofs that you love the Lord John 14 21 John 14 21 then we'll jump to 23 he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him 23 Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. First John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. First John chapter 2 from verse 15. Love not the world, aha, uh -huh. neither the things that are in the world, the word love there comes from the word eros. Eros, an ungodly affinity, a passion and a drive for the things of this world that becomes higher than your pursuit of God. To love not the world does not mean you will not have the blessings. He made all things richly even for us to enjoy. But it says love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world whether you're a preacher whether you're a politician whether you're a businessman it doesn't matter who you are he says the love of the father is not in him then the next verse he categorizes everything that is in the world into three main categories for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not in the father it's not of the father but is of the world Verse 17, and the world passeth away and the loss thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Lord, I love you. I love you. He said, mm -mm. Love is not an empty word. I will have to see. For God so loved the world. He would have said, Lord, world, I love you while we are suffering. But when he loved the world, he gave. And what he gave was his only. Can you give your only, not your many? When you get to a point where you can give your only, you love God. Your only. Hmm. What does it mean? And what does it take to walk with God? Total surrender total surrender when he says go left left becomes where you go go right right becomes where you go whether it is comfortable or uncomfortable because where he leads you you are willing to go listen if you do not grow to this level you will never attain unto maturity in the spirit there is such an obsession for a Christianity of convenience. Listen, and you know, I would, I would always teach you the balance, the whole counsel of God. Please hear me. No matter what else you learn, if your love for God does not supersede the obsession for pleasure and the obsession for convenience, you cannot be mighty with God. We live in a world where our obsession for convenience is greater than our love and our pursuit for God. 
when a woman goes to the labor room you can see the woman crying in fact not even the labor room the entire process of the pregnancy it is within her power to get tired one day and say listen i've made my contribution to this baby i am tired but it's because she loves the baby more than her condition am i right on that <laughs> men are saying yes how in the world <laughs> are we together have you seen what pregnancy does to an average woman it will change everything about her oh i want to eat food that has smoke smelling i want to take this and then they bring it and the person says, i've, I've changed I, I want something else but in all of that what she's carrying as painful as it is is worth the process most believers complain because your love for jesus is not strong enough to sponsor and provide the staying power whether through storms through rain through whatever it is let me be fair to the man when the man now goes to you know struggle out in life and bring something back home even if he returns back with scars he is happy that his family can feed and just seeing the joy that he's able to meet the needs of those he loves will be more than every embarrassment and every suffering that he went through can i tell you every time jesus becomes a luggage and a load check what else has taken his place every time the pursuit of the faith life becomes an inconvenience coming to the house of god loving jesus prayer fasting the word of god corporate fellowship the moment it becomes a burden i want you to check something is wrong because every time you know the absence of passion by the emergence of excuses the absence of passion is characterized by the sudden emergence of excuses the moment there is no passion and there is no drive you will have excuses i'm busy you will have excuses don't forget what i'm telling you you can test the absence of passion by the sudden emergence of excuses i'm busy i just got a promotion and i need to hurry up so you can pray you can fast you can study the word of god you can spend time with him something is wrong with your love life is someone learning the bible took out time to tell us the family life and other involvements of enoch so that there is no excuse the bible never records that he was an irresponsible father the bible never records that he was an irresponsible husband the bible never says he was a fake prophet you know a bit about prophecy and you know it takes a lot with god to command that level of accuracy to speak about the coming of christ when the dispensation was just beginning what level of depth and heights did he touch and yet in spite of the earthly responsibilities the bible says enoch still walked with god that means your job is not an excuse is someone hearing now that means your marriage is not an excuse that means the presence of the children is not an excuse the ministry enlargement is not an excuse kill those excuses tonight and say lord i return back to the place of the altar all of the excuses i have given flimsy excuses they may look justifiable but enoch cancels all our excuses if you use family life as an excuse enoch was a family man if you use ministry as an excuse enoch was a mighty prophet if you use old age as an excuse enoch was a very old man and yet he walked with god if you say it's because i'm giving my children all the time that's why i cannot walk with god what greater heritage to birth children and then one son who was the longest living man on earth enoch someone say no excuses prophesy to yourself say no excuses hmm. you will always have time for what you love as much as people say they are busy if you hear right now that they are sharing one one million somewhere 
in Guagualada this night and by six o'clock it will stop energy and fire and passion and determination and zest oh bold bold stops work by 12 midnight stories you will find a way of calling a destiny helper call it even if the person says i'm charging you hundred thousand you say no problem let's go i will give you if i go back with nine hundred thousand is still profit for where your treasure is where your treasure is beloved people don't just laugh where your treasure is that is where your heart will be where your treasure is if your if your treasure is your job your heart will be there if your treasure is ministry i will keep saying it for as long as i live that there is nothing there is no one there is no activity upon this earth that sustains the ability to take his place in my life I will close this ministry a thousand times and beg you with tears in my eyes and say I didn't do it because I hate you it's because I love him Abraham take now thy son thine only son whom thou lovest and offer him upon a mount that I will show you the Bible says Abraham arose early in the morning and carried Isaac to go and kill him is he would have given one of the servants and said just go and kill him for me I would tell God he's dead but to kill him by yourself my call tonight from the life of Enoch is for everyone under the sound of my voice and those who are watching to return back to the place of intimacy with the Lord you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for oh our hearts always hunger for you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for oh our hearts always hunger for And Enoch walked with God and Joshua Selman walked with God and this businessman walked with God and this preacher and this father listen to me there are many men today who were very spiritual before they got married and had children when they see spiritual people or see spiritual platforms they run away because it reminds them of their yesterday there are people who probably years ago on campus were on fire and they loved the lord and they decided to use growth and age to graduate out of the school of the spirit there are many people who love god because they had responsibilities in church you are a deacon you are a pastor so you must be there for the morning prayer the moment you take away those titles it also goes with the fire how many homes today do not pray how many homes today do not fast how many homes today there is no system of spiritual growth the man is up and doing looking for money the woman is up and doing carrying stories from place to place everybody is going from pillar to post the children are becoming like lucifer within the house please hear me walking with god is greater than walking with the government walking with god is greater than walking with shell and nmpc walking with god is greater than walking with any institution on earth may god grant you grace to work with all those desired institutions but in addition you must get to a point where you great working with god is greater than working in a ministry
You give the healing and grace that my heart always The average believer has not cultivated intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It is the reason why today our pain and everything that worries us goes to social media. Our pain and everything that worries us goes to people around because we have not known how to draw comfort from his presence. Those who really walk with God have known the value of his presence. His presence is where we come and cry. Jesus, when he was preparing to go to the cross, he knew the burden of what was on him. He went to the place of prayer and said, Father, oh, there is a place that we can cry. There is a place where you can empty yourself. Most of where we are going to is the wrong place. His presence. Where you can open up your heart and cry out your heart to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Some of you, what God should do for you, you are hoping friends will do it. What God should do for you, you are hoping social media will do it. Attracting sympathy from the whole world. What, you, what God should do for you is what you think money would. Listen, let me tell you this. The greatest of anything will fail you. Return back to his presence. That is the place where you can cry and you know you are safe. That is the place where you can roll before him. And I'm not here to complain about my many struggles. But by your spirit and your grace. I'm confident you'll solve them, but I'm here to say I love you. I'm here to say I adore you. I'm here to say I love you. I I love you, Lord, from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, from the bottom of my heart. Yes, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Let me show you a lover's declaration. It says, Oh God, you are my God. Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Give it to us, please, media. My soul thirsted for you. My flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 2. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Verse 3. Because your loving kindness is better than life. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. Can I tell you this? For many of us, you know what is your God by how frequent you run to it. So the uncle that you are always disturbing for your lifting, listen carefully, you know who and what is your God by the frequency of your visitation. Hmm. Every five minutes you are on social media. 
search him who will when he says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden afterwards you run from pillar to post ah. am i wasting your time return to him oh you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone you are god alone you are god alone from before time began you are on To love him above and beyond everything he says what shall separate us from the love of god what shall separate us from the love of god and he begins to list all kinds of things he say nay in all these things we are more than conquerors the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it entered the heart of any man what god has in store not for prayer warriors not for fasting giants not for preachers not for eloquent people not for business people but for them that love him them that love him them that love him please hear me for someone god is calling you and he's saying i am still waiting where you left me five years ago i am still waiting man of god i'm still waiting where i was with you before invitation started coming i'm still there waiting patiently would you return back to me i am still waiting you cried and cried and cried and cried when you had no job i'm still waiting where you received your employment later Please take this as the voice of God tonight. Because if we don't pray for our generation, this level of lukewarmness we keep marketing and giving flimsy excuses is not about fanatism. It's about passion and desire. Don't care, don't tell me you are a preacher. Don't tell me you are a businessman, you are a deacon, you are an apostle. That is none of my business. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this? Lovest thou me more than fame? Lovest thou me more than ministerial exploits? Lovest thou me more than ministry titles? Lovest thou me more than money? Can I tell you this? If you fail in everything in life, but not in loving Jesus, you did not fail. If you win in every other thing in life and fail in your love life, oh dear, you failed. You failed. Do you know why most of our children today do not love God? Because the depth of passion they see comes from their parents. And so if they see a father and a mother and leaders who are not serious about God, giving flimsy excuses, that becomes their templates too. When a child sees his father rolling before God every day, Lord, there is nothing I have and there is nothing I am except you. One day that child will come and roll with you too. Even if he does not know what you are doing. Listen, let me tell you, we may not understand what you are doing now till the next 10, 15 years. There will rise a generation that will not honor God. May God forbid it. I say it again. May God forbid it. Let it not be that it is in our lifetime. We will see shrines return back to homes. Not just villages, oh, homes. Can I tell you this? For some of you, you need to suspend ministry activities for a while and go back to the altar this this deception of invitations and open door can dry you spiritually oh i'm doing ministry exploits i'm traveling from nation to nation isaiah was doing ministry when there was a call in heaven who shall go for us whereas on earth there was ministry going on 
all kinds of things when people clap and say joshua sermon you are busy you go from place to place i just smile and respectfully say god bless you when i return back with god i say i reject deception oh god i your boy is here from where you found me may i ever remain there ministry nonsense right from the place of his presence he can honor you to bless the nations but see satan will give you ministry open doors a thousand times if it will cost you his presence oh with jesus joy he will open doors for you not every open door is anointed i've told you this thing there are doors you have to shut intentionally please return return i don't know who i'm speaking to but the holy spirit is speaking to someone return return i'm not condemning you but return god is saying i am still waiting return to the place of the altar the place of fire the place of power return to the place of his presence he called them that they would be with him and then represent him I'd rather be called a failure as a man of God and yet succeed and win with God than to have the accolades of men across the nations and then you do not carry any weight with God. Someone pray right where you are. Father, grace to return. Please, someone pray. Pray. Grace to return. Grace to return. Grace to return, oh God. Mm. Pray one minute. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love. More power, more of you in my life. Please pray one minute. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More More power, more of you in my life. In the name of Jesus. Question two. The second question we have to ask and answer tonight, and then we're done. What does it mean and what does it take to please God? Remember the first question. What does it mean? And what does it take to walk with God? We said it means to love him and to prioritize him above and beyond anything this world can offer, including your own life. It means to get to a point and a state of total surrender. Now we are asking and attempting to answer the second question. What does it mean and what does it take to please God? John chapter 1 from verse 6 to seven let me tell you what it means to please God there was a man sent from God whose name was John who sent him everybody please look up if I send you to go and do something for me what then becomes my joy is it not in your doing and fulfilling what I have sent you to do? Is that true? When you return back to me and say, Sir, I have done this. In the parable of the talents, Matthew 26, don't turn there, just write for reference. The Bible says he gave unto one five talents, two and one, and then he left. The one with five went and did business and multiplied it to ten. The one with two to four and when he returned he used a statement that showed he was pleased well done good and faithful servant is that true for the last one who did not do anything he was roaming around complaining and even buried his talent 
it says i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow so i thought instead of wasting this let me just bury it here is your talent and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant what does it take and what does it mean to please god let's finish the scripture john 1 6 there was a man sent from god that man was you and verse 7 the bible says the same came for a witness say witness to bear witness of the light that all men through his witness might believe right here i have taught you this is the corporate mandate of every believer it does not matter whether you are a businessman a man of god on the pulpit a politician captain of industry whatever it is our corporate mandate in this kingdom spiritual growth 101 you have once you know god and you want to understand his ways you must come to this and realize that our corporate mandate is the call to be witnesses a witness is the validator of god's claim there is no greater way to give god joy than to bear witness to the light it says that all men through that witness might be saved john chapter 4 and verse 34 john 4 34 jesus said unto them when he walked upon the earth my meat that means my satisfaction is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work is that in your bible when you read the prophecy of enoch in jude 1 from verse 14 jude was i mean enoch was calling his then generation to return back to the place of righteousness to return back to the place where they would acknowledge the god of heaven he called them and said beware he's coming with a cloud and he's coming to judge this and that and to call them back this was what john did john was that voice crying in the wilderness and calling the people to repent and for a long time he did it well except that bitterness and offense got into him and he veered off into something else and he paid for it by dying cheaply daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 daniel chapter 12 let's read it together please are you ready one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever they that turn many not few to righteousness i can tell you what it takes to please god more than studying your bible more than just preaching when you are actively involved in being a witness and you use everything god has given you your beauty your talent your anointing every resource god has given you you use it to represent him and to lift up that banner of light and righteousness across the nations making your contribution towards kingdom come that is a life that pleases god that was the testimony of Enoch. The testimony of Enoch was not the accuracy of his prophecy. Unfortunately, these are the credentials we use today as men of God. These are the credentials we use today as business people. I am an accurate prophet. I am a great apostle. I am a wonderful pastor. Those things are wonderful. But if you covet the testimony of Enoch, the testimony of Enoch is not the life of a preacher the testimony of enoch is not the accuracy of a prophet the testimony of enoch is not a man who understands economic systems to amass so much wealth the testimony of enoch is a life that utilizes the time given and all the resources within your advantage to become the light when you become the light indeed you become one who pleases the father jesus had the same testimony as enoch he said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased please hear me believers may i recommend again to everyone and our global family watching 
please go back and listen to my birthday broadcast if you can listen to it please listen to it I taught on some things that I want you to listen to it will help to align your mind even towards this season to align with what God is doing one of the things that I taught is the power of purpose I said nothing in itself is valuable and profitable until it is connected to purpose now the challenge with the body of Christ is we teach spiritual truths in isolation to being a witness and in isolation to kingdom come any truth you teach in isolation to and with God's agenda becomes self-destructive even though it is the truth so if I teach you prosperity I teach you principles and believe me under this ministry you will learn everything when i'm teaching the series on prosperity i will teach it as if i don't teach any other thing else when i'm teaching on deliverance i will teach it i give my heart and my all because it is my job by god to see that you are holistically built but can i tell you nothing in itself profits you until it is connected to that agenda of being a witness and that agenda of kingdom come now you can learn about power because it is connected to your witness now you can learn about prosperity and not feel apologetic for it you can be reading a book on prosperity and you can confess i am a kingdom billionaire not from a carnal man's lustful communication but one who understands the role that that money will play in making you an effective witness and in making the kingdom come project a reality listen i can summarize christianity for you within a few sentences the entire faith life is not complicated step one jesus and everything about him the real journey for the believer starts with his encounter with Jesus and that comes by hearing the message of the gospel that saves and then at the point of salvation you are now introduced to the personality of the Holy Spirit alongside the Word of God your journey into the kingdom experience now begins at your encounter with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God then you are given the privilege of being connected to human vessels who will now work in partnership with the word and the spirit to begin that job of methodical mentorship and growth in your life when you get to a point where you are gaining understanding and that mentorship has to be methodical teaching you the truths of the kingdom line upon line precept upon precept you get to a point where you attain a stage of commendable maturity now you are taught not only who you are and your rights we now introduce the kingdom concept to let you know that God has a responsibility over you the purpose for all the blessings the long life is that you are able to be an effective witness can I tell you only when you know your assignment as a witness and you understand the purpose behind everything God gives you now your prayer and your wanting things will make sense oh in the name of Jesus I will never be poor I agree with you but to what end I came from a background I've suffered I want to enjoy my life before I die that is not a wise man's approach I desire this wealth because based on the blueprint of the mandates given to me I understand that kingdom financing has a, an, a major role to play in kingdom come and since God has called me to play that role with Jesus joy and he will send you resources beyond your wildest imagination because there is purpose connected to it please hear me believers we have to repent and manage our blind passion for things that are not connected to God's divine program it will always lead us to destruction hallelujah before he said give us this day our daily bread the prayer before it is thy kingdom come and thy will be done it is with respect to the kingdom he says give us our daily bread it is with respect to the kingdom that he said forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us it is with respect to the kingdom that he says lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil everything was connected to our being a witness and Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God how did he please God 
by becoming a light to his generation a beacon that can draw men to righteousness can i tell you you must spend your life making an active contribution with your life and your resources whether as a preacher as a whatever it is the geography of your witness i would always teach everything you have within you must work together to see jesus glorified to see jesus revealed this is true until and unless you get to that point believe me you may be a believer but you are not pleasing the lord dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 